Hi Grade Nines, I'm Mrs Falco and today I'm going to be discussing the poem Leather Jackets, Bikes and Birds by Robert Davies. For most of you it will be in your Term 1 Poetry Pack. It is your last page, Poem 7. It is the last one from Term 1 that we did not get to. Okay, two things before I start my poem. Number one, you need to be numbering your lines. If you're not numbering your lines, you're going to land up losing your spot between where I'm talking and where you're following in your poem. So please make sure you number your lines. That way you and I can stay together while discussing this poem. Number two, for this poem, we need to be aware of the idea of stereotyping. Some of you may have forgotten this idea. So to just quickly recap over it, Stereotyping is a generalized belief that we have for a group of people. In other words, what do we think about, what do we feel, what do we assume about people that belong to a certain group. In this poem, we're going to be looking at the stereotype given to people who belong to bike groups. Okay, people who ride motorbikes that belong to certain groups. So biker group gang members. Okay. The stereotype that we generally give to people that belong to biker groups would be that they're naughty, that they're troublemakers, that they're mischievous, that they're unfriendly, that they're dirty, that they're drunkards. These are all very negative connotations that we give to biker group gang members. So you need to be aware of it. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into your poem. As usual, I'm going to read through it twice. The first time will be to get a general understanding for your poem. And the second time that we go through it, I will go through it line by line, analyzing what your poet is talking about. Okay, so general idea, what's going on in our poem. Leather Jackets, Bikes and Birds by Robert Davies. The streets are noisy with the movement of passing motors. The coffee bars get fuller. Leather jacket group begin together. Stand and listen, pretending they are looking for trouble. The jukebox plays its continuous tune, music appreciated by most. The aroma of espresso, coffee fills the nostrils and the night. Motorbikes pull up. Riders dismount and join their friends in the gang. They stand smoking, swearing, playing with girls, making a teenage row. They pretend not to notice the drizzle falling out of the dark because they've got to be hard to be a leather jacket. A couple in the corner snogging, hoping the motor lights will not be dipped too much so, the, so that the others will see them. They must, all be rec they must all have recognition. There must always be enough leather jackets around them, the same as theirs. The street lamp on the side of the street shows the rain for what it is, wet and cold. But it does not show their faces for what they are. Okay, overall understanding of our poem. This poem is talking about the stereotype that we give to people who belong to biker, uh, bike, biker gang group members. Okay? So the people who belong to these groups that ride motorbikes. It is talking about how we assume certain ideas. And at the end of the poem, it's going to question whether those ideas that we give to them, what socially we believe about them, whether it is actually true and whether it represents who they are or who society believes them to be or assumes them to be. Let's look through it. Okay, line one. The streets are noisy with the movement of passing motors. The streets are noisy with the movement of passing motors talks about how the streets are very busy with lots of cars and bikes riding on them. The roads are busy. The coffee bars get fuller. A coffee bar would be like a coffee shop or a cafe where you go to drink coffee and maybe have a slice of cake or a scone or that sort of thing. Okay? So coffee bars get fuller. The leather jacket group, group begins together. 
people belonging to this biker group are gathering together in this coffee shop. The idea of them gathering in the coffee shop is very unusual. Stereotypically, we would assume they'd be gathering in a bar, but here they're gathering in, a, in an innocent coffee shop. Seems very unusual. Your poet is questioning whether it is valid to assume what we do about bikers. The leather, group, the leather jacket group begins to gather. Stand and listen, pretending they are looking for trouble. So these gang group members are gathering in the coffee shop and they're chatting with one another and they're pretending to look for trouble. They're not really looking for trouble, but people assume they're looking for trouble. Think about like when you see a biker wearing their colors in a supermarket in pick and pay, okay? Whenever you stand next to them, Oftentimes, society looks at them and assumes they're going to look for trouble. You sometimes pull away a bit and you're a little bit cautious about how you react to them. You're not going to push them or bump them because you're scared that maybe they're going to live up to what we as society expect them to be. These rowdy, mean, tough guys. Okay? The fact that they're pretending to look for trouble implies that maybe they're not looking for trouble. It's questioning if they're really these troublemakers that society believes them to be. Line seven, the jukebox plays its continuous tune. A jukebox would be a big box generally found in bars where people slot in a coin for money or pay a little bit of money and then you get to choose a song that you want to play in that bar or in that coffee shop in this case. Okay, so it's a lot like an mp3 with a speaker. So that jukebox, that music maker is busy playing music. And in line, line eight, music appreciated by most. So it's music that the mass, that most people could enjoy, that most people are going to put a bit of moves to, they're going to dance a little bit to. The aroma of, expression, of espresso. Aroma means the smell. And espresso is a short little, um, very strong shot of coffee. Okay? So that very intense smell of coffee is in the air. You can smell it. So the aroma of espresso, uh, coffee, fills the nostrils and the night. Fills the nostrils, you can smell it literally. And the night, it fills the air, sets a vibe, it sets an atmosphere for the evening. Okay? Very different. Again, we're expressing, we're expecting, stereotypically, we're expecting negative things. We're expecting maybe the smell of vomit from drunk people or the smell of beer or heavy alcohol. That's what we're expecting stereotypically from these bikers. But here we've got the smell of coffee. A, a lovely smell, generally good connotations here. Again, we're playing two very unusual, uncommon ideas against each other, questioning whether that stereotype is valid. Okay. There's two meanings there. You've got a literal meaning in line 9 and 10, or 10 and 11. You've got a literal meaning and you've got a figurative meaning. Okay. Literally, the aroma of coffee fills their nose. So like their nose has got no other smell to it but coffee. But figuratively, it's actually meaning that the smell and the atmosphere of these good feelings, the good ideas like we have from coffee. I mean, coffee gives us life for most of us that live on it. It gives you energy. It gives you motivation for some people. Okay? So it's giving these good connotations to what we normally would give bad. Bikers would usually give bad connotations to, And here we're giving them good ones. Very unusual. Line 12. Motorbikes pull up. So a lot of these bikers are going to pull up on their motorbikes. The bikes don't drive themselves. So motorbikes pull up. Bikers dismount and join their friends in the gang. Line 14. 
So a lot of these bikers are going to pull up, they're going to arrive at this coffee shop, they're going to get off of their bikes, dismount means to get off of their bikes, and they're going to join and talk to the people that belong to the same biker group as they do. The next line, um, they're going to join their friends and stand smoking, swearing, and playing with girls, making a teenage row. Okay, line 14, they're going to stand with people that belong to the same biker group as them. There's that idea of unison, belonging, okay? Think about like when our school goes to a sporting event at a different school. Most of the time you'll see that people tend to stick with their own group, with people that they know. Very unusually, you'll find that they'll drift to a different school or a, a group with a different school, okay? So these biker gang group members are going to all stick together. They're going to stay together. They're going to talk together. They're going to laugh together, tell a couple of jokes. Um, and now we jump into those negative uh, stereotypes that we assume from them. When we think of bikers, we think of people that are going to, again, stand together. We're going to think about people who are smoking and dirty. We're thinking about people that are swearing we think about people that are playing with girls. Line 16. Play with girls here. They're going to flirt with a lot of girls. They're going to be that player in the group. Okay. And line 17. Making a teenage row. Row there is not talking about rowing a boat. It's talking about a fight. And a teenage row would be fighting about things that teenagers would fight about. Okay. In the greater scheme of the world, in the bigger picture of the world, it's not important or vital things that they're fighting about. They're not fighting for these serious topics like uh, global warming or the virus that's going on. They're not fighting about that sort of thing. They'd be fighting about a girl looked at you or why are you making eyes at my girl or don't buy my girl a drink. That sort of nonsense is what they'd be fighting about. So that idea of a teenage row, it's talking about how the things that they're fighting, the topics that they're fighting about are not serious topics, okay? Just like teenagers generally, stereotypically, are not focused or most of the time are focused on irrelevant or not so important things compared to the greater world around us, okay? Line 18 18. They pretend not to notice the drizzle. Again, we've got the word pretend. Take note of that. Pretending what it looks like they're doing versus what are they really doing. Okay? So they pretend not to notice the drizzle. Drizzle, the light fall of the rain. Line 19. Falling out of the dark. Falling out of the dark sky. They can't really see where it's coming from because it's dark. But we know it's falling from the sky. Line 20. Because you've got to be hard to be a leather jacket. Leather jacket. Talking about people who are wearing those leather jackets. Again, biker gang members. Okay, Wearing that jacket gives them that sense of belonging to a certain group. If you see people... Just like when you look at people going to school, if everyone's wearing their blazers, you can very clearly identify where they belong, which school they belong to. So biker uh, colors would be showing which biker group they belong to. So it's very important that those colors are visible. Okay. Um, so they pretend not to notice the drizzle falling out of the dark, because you've got to be hard to be a leather jacket. You've got to have this tough idea or tough, um, I can handle the rain sort of idea, that manly man vibe to you if you want to belong to this biker group. Again, it's a stereotype. The idea of them pretending questions whether that stereotype is true or if it's just what society imposes, gives to them. All right, next one, line 22. A couple. A couple means two people. So two people are standing in the corner, snogging. Snogging means kissing. 
Okay? They hope the motor lights will not be dipped too much. Line 24 and 25. Dipped here means dull. Okay? They don't want the lights from the motorbikes to dull out, to hide, to disappear, hiding what they're doing. They actually want to be seen doing what they're doing. They're not like most teenagers who will hide around a corner. They want to be seen kissing one another. Okay? Um, line 25. So the others will see them. They want other people to see them kissing. They're trying to live up to that stereotype of being the player, the hard guy, the guy that gets the girl. That stereotype we would give to um, men, but also bikers. Okay, or biker men, generally. Um, next line. So the others will see them. Line 27. They must all have recognition. Okay, very important line here, line 27. They must all have recognition. Every member of that group needs to be recognizable, need to be able to see who they belong to because of their leather jackets, okay, their colors, the part that shows you which group they belong to. So every group member or every member of that biker group needs to clearly be identifiable just like you guys are very clearly identifiable wearing your blazers these members will be very clearly identifiable because of their colors in that biker group okay the the jacket that they wear over their normal clothes that have the group member or the group logo on it and maybe the name in the group that sort of details on it okay so every group member needs to be recognizable at all times. Line 28. There must always be enough leather jackets around them. They need to have enough of their own group members around them. Line 36. The same as theirs. They don't want just other bikers around them. It needs to be, it needs to be bikers that are part of their group. Their biker group. It's the idea of having many of your own people, your own friends around you that will have your back. Okay? Again, that tough exterior, that tough stereotype they can take on the world. Line 31. The street lamp on the side of the street shows the rain for what it is, wet and cold. You've got the idea of reality. The street light in the road represents society and reality. Okay, society calls bikers what we stereotype to stereotype them to be. Okay, so when you see a biker, generally people get very nervous because we assume that the stereotype that we have about bikers is true. Just like the street lamp shows the rain for what it appears to be, wet and cold. Line 34 and 35, your last two lines of the poem. But it does not show their faces for what they are. Okay, So the light that comes from above, it shows the wet and the cold rain. But it does not show the people, the bikers, those people. It doesn't show them for who they are. It shows them that they are bikers. You can see that because of the light from above. You can see that they belong to a biker group, but you cannot see who they are. That's very important. Your poet in this poem is constantly reminding you to question what is real and what does, a, what does that stereotype allude to? What do we assume because of that stereotype? Okay, Very common theme to have. We categorize this under the theme of appearance, versus reality. What do things appear to be? What does it look like? What do those bikers look like? When we look at them, what do we stereotype to them? What are they re really? Are all bikers mean? Are all bikers drunkards? Are all bikers troublemakers? Not necessarily. Sometimes yes, but oftentimes maybe not. Not every person 
can be categorized or can be labeled according to what they wear okay and that's very true not just in bikers but in the world around us okay your questions that you need to answer in your book number one study the title a what stereotyped group of people did you expect this poem to be about so who did you expect it to who, what sort of characteristics did you expect to find when you were talking about these biker groups or biker members? B. Explain how the word bikes is a colloquial word or colloquial language. C. Explain the use of slang in the title. Number two. Who is the poem really about? To B. Where do these people meet? To C. What is, what is ironic about this? Why is that unusual? 2D, what group identity have they attempted to create for themselves? In other words, what are the type of people that you're expecting to find in this biker group? What is that stereotype? 2E, explain why the word pretend has been repeated. 2F, Quote from the, pro, from the poem proof that this group is uh, insecure and feel they need to show off in public. Again, you need to quote, so that means you need to use your quotation marks. And if you're in 9C and other classes, if you'd like to, I do expect you to do that line referencing as well, like we've been practicing. Okay? In other words... You do your quotes, you do your, your inverted commas or quotation marks. If you're starting with two, you've got to end with two. If you're starting with one, you end with one. And afterwards, in brackets, you write line and whatever line you found it on. Line one, for example. Okay? So line reference, don't forget it. And 2G, what do the couple kissing hope will happen? Hmm. Number three, explain how the line, they must all have recognition, can be said to be the message of the poem. How can that show you what the whole poem is trying to discuss? Number four, does society recognize that they are not, that they are not who they are pretending to be? Explain your answer. And number five, is the poem sitting in sorry is the poem sitting in judgment of this group substantiate your answer in other words the tone of the poem is it judgmental is it saying they're good they're bad they this they that and given an, give a reason for your answer get information and proof from the poem don't thumb suck it you guys like to thumb suck it and that's where you lose your marks you need to find it from the poem come I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to either WhatsApp me if you're on my groups or you can also leave a comment on the video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. All the best, guys. Keep it up. We'll get through this.